going to talk about weight painting and how to get uh, your meshes to move as best you can with the body um, without having to seriously you know deform the living crap out of it so for starters uh, what you need to do is go to creating custom armor step by step by now you see my mod page here's the address uh, and download the weight painting tutorial video resource alright so go ahead and just download this uh, just click download manually um, as soon as you get it you'll have it on your desktop just go ahead and double click it uh, if you're creating a male character you'll want the male testing if you're creating a female you'll want the female I'm working with a female so I'll just drag this out and drop it on my desktop and close that uh, you can delete this uh, or you can keep it whatever alright so now that I have this on my folder I'll go ahead and uh, you know I got my 3ds max open here's the item I've created this simple skirt uh, that I plan to weight paint uh, for this tutorial so now I have my skirt in here what I'm gonna have to do is uh, get it set up to where I don't lose anything because let me warn you when you're messing around with um, weight painting it is very easy to screw up your mesh so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert it to an editable mesh and I'm going to make sure I keep this backed up so as you can see this is a very complex mesh it's one thing I want to make a quick note of the more complex your mesh is the more vertices you have the easier it is to weight paint just keep that in mind when you're making it. Maybe you might want to M smooth it once. You know, don't go over 5,000 vertices, or your 3DS will crash when you try to export. Try to keep it under 3,000 or 5,000, or you might have a bad day. Anyways, I'm gonna select all the vertices. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weld them, which is something you definitely want to try to do prior to weight painting because welded vertices are easier to weight paint than a non welded mesh uh, is so try to weld your mesh prior to doing uh, anything uh, and deselect the vertices I'm gonna go ahead and do my standard exporting uh, crap you know set it up so I can export it I'll throw a skin wrap on it now this is not the skin wrap we're gonna keep this is just so we can back our mesh up so uh, you know let me shut this off I was messing around in here earlier I'm gonna unfreeze all I'm gonna go ahead and select add and I'm just going to select the body and this is not the uh, one that we're going to be working with we're going to change this whole skin later uh, okay that's good I'll go ahead and convert that delete this and I'll throw a BS dismember skin modifier on it select everything and uh, Skyrim torso now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to export this to keep it backed up in case I screw up so I'll select export I'll go to my desktop and I'm gonna go ahead and right here in my female testing folder I'm just gonna create a backup NIF alright so I'm just backing up my NIF here uh, whoops hold on right click unhide all <laughs> make sure your bones are showing for you export export all right, and uh, backup I'll go ahead and save that so now I've got it backed up Wait a second all right, now it's backed up. Now I'm ready to start playing around with it and getting the uh, skin on it that I want. So I'm just going to select uh, this. I'm to uh, right-click, convert it to an editable mesh. I'm going to recheck to make sure all my vertices are welded, which they are. Okay. And now I'm going to file. I'm going to import. And what you want to do is browse to your Skyrim mesh folder. As you can see, my computer crashed, so I had to completely do a uh, brand new install. So everything's different now for me. Uh, yours should still be in Skyrim Mesh, so I put mine in G. I'll go ahead and find my uh, Skyrim modding, Skyrim Meshes. Okay, go to your Skyrim Meshes folder, and you want to go to Clothes. So uh, go to Meshes, Clothes, uh, and find your Farm Clothes 01. All right, and what you want to do is grab the Torso F underscore zero if you're doing a skirt. Uh, we want something that's got a base that's kind of moving the way we want our mesh to move. All right, but we're going to be adding two things to the skin, so it's not what you think. We have to use a base mesh, then we have to use another mesh. So we're going to be waiting to two different meshes. So go ahead and uh, import your torso F underscore zero. We don't need the skeleton because we already have one. Now we have two meshes. We have the UMP body, we have this new farm thing, and we have our skirt. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can throw another smooth on it if you want. I always like to add smooths to mine before I do anything and uh, grab your skin wrap modifier and put that on there uh, now with your skin wrap selected we want it on face deformation leave your fall off at a one 
all right because we're adding more than uh, one mesh we want a decent sized fall off for the mesh to work with so with my fall off set to a one I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select blend to base mesh all right and leave that as a five and uh, so you want weight all points blend to base mesh check set it a five and phase deformation as soon as your settings are the same as mine uh, go ahead and select add zoom in and select the part on the body uh, so I'm selecting my UMP body which is underneath select your base body first and then select what you're uh, going to be adding to the skin information which is this skirt uh, this uh, farmer clothes because it's already a skirt you know and that's kind of what I'm making so I want something that moves with the skeleton and sort of the formation that I want but I also want it to move the way the UMP body does my base mesh so it uh, all moves together correctly so it collects the data from the first thing you click then it collects the data from the second piece that we're collecting skin data from and now it's going to take both of those and kind of find some kind of center point in between this mesh and my UMP body mesh and it's going to say okay you know if this is zero on one vertice but it's one on another I'm gonna set that vertice to 0.5 on my new mesh and so what it's going to do is it's going to try to um, negotiate between the two meshes so I'm going to deselect so I don't add anything else and I'll go ahead and convert that to a skin uh, go ahead and de uh, delete your skin wrap <clears throat> and now you can go ahead and select the uh, dress here delete it and select the actually let me show you something real quick take a look here at how far away this dress is most meshes in Skyrim are pretty far away from the bone structure that's just something to keep in mind because uh, down the road we may have to drag this mesh and make it a little wider away from the body our new mesh we may have to make it a little wider because that's just the way the skeleton is set up alright so just keep that in mind uh, don't worry about it now but just keep it in mind that the original Skyrim meshes are usually pretty far away from the skeleton they're a lot farther than what most people make their meshes when I created my skirt and here's reasons for that it's just the way the skeleton moves and the way the animations in the game are alright so it's just keep in mind that we may have to wind up moving this skirt out you know to where it's kind of out as far as this torso is not because we're skinning to this torso but because of the way the game animations play you know it's just the way it is without deleting parts of the body sometimes you have to you know make your skirt or whatever a little bit wider and farther away from the body than you uh, planned to there's just no way around that sorry uh, okay well anyways I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I'm done with it and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this um, old body that was part of it All right, now I have some skin detail on here and let's find out what this skin detail actually did so first thing I want to do is you want to freeze your body uh, that way you know you can see it better you can see when things poke through and we're gonna go ahead and import an animation so go up to your 3ds symbol select import and go to your desktop where you dropped your uh, female testing folder or your testing folder and select mtrunforward.kf and select open now you'll probably have a box pops up that looks like this dcheck add time tags and dcheck add key notes and have clear animation check and select import now sometimes when you import an animation you'll notice the body will become very distorted and it will not look right if that ever happens like let's say the body's kinda collapsed over on itself and it looks terrible if that happens import again the same animation just keep importing that animation until it looks right like this looks how the body should look when it's running alright now down here you'll notice that I have this uh, little bar here that I'm moving in the lower part of my screen this is the animation frame selector alright this is frame zero of this animation one two three four five six seven eight nine you know and so forth and as you can see I got parts of the body sticking through so I'm gonna select this window hit alt W I'm gonna put it on frame zero I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna select the skirt alright now I have skin selected I'm gonna select edit envelopes alright and I'm going to scroll all the way down here till I find a section called paint weights alright now we don't really need to see all these bones they're kind of in the way so why don't we uh, unfreeze all select this and then select the um, I might have to come up here and deselect that envelope. Select both of these and right click and say hide unselected. 
hide those bones, get him out of here so he can concentrate. I'm going to change this to a select too so I don't actually move something. Right now select edit envelopes. Mm, you know what? Hold on. Let's freeze the body too. Make it easier to see. Now select edit envelopes. Scroll all the way down here to where you get to paint weights. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to talk about painting weights for a second. I want you to click on these three little buttons here next to paint weight. I'm going to pull up this little painter options menu and I want you to go ahead and click on this squiggly line right here. So you get this line in this uh, section. That's a zero weight on it and a one weight and how it falls off based on the uh, amount where you're painting. All right? That's basically all that is, is just showing it how it's going to fall off. This is a nice fluid fall off. And you notice you have maximum strength here, which I'm going to set to a 1. All right. And you have this box, paint blend weights is checked. Now, whenever this box is checked, that's basically what I like to call smoothing or pushing. And when it's unchecked, that's what I like to call pooling. All right. Pooling is very powerful uh, when it comes to the maximum strength. Like if I pulled with this unchecked, it would pull it way out. So I'd want to set this to a really num low number at 0 0.02 when I use the pull. And when I use the push, I want it, because it's very weak, I want to go ahead and just set it to a 1. All right, so when I pull or smooth, or I'm sorry, when I, when I push or smooth, I want it set to a 1. And when I pull, I want it set to a 0 0.02, which, uh, I'll, you know, that sounds very confusing. It'll be easier to understand as we do this. So the first thing I can notice is I have part of the body, you know, I'm on the very first frame. I have part of the body sticking through my skirt. Well, I want to go through each frame and try to smooth it before I try to push it or pull it rather. So I'm going to smooth first. So I'm going to leave this check, leave this set to one. I'm going to show you one quick, uh, and I'm going to click on this paint weights. And now you'll notice I have a gizmo. All right. Now to grow or shrink the size of this gizmo, you hold down control and shift and then your left mouse button. With those three held down, you can move your mouse up and down and you'll change the size of it. All right. The other uh, hotkey that you need to know about is Alt and Shift. Alt and Shift will change the strength. Remember that maximum strength? Look at my painter options window. You can see the number changing as I move my mouse up and down with Control, Shift, and left mouse button all held down. I usually never use this. I always type in the uh, maximum strength volume. Uh, so anyways, the basic one that you're going to mostly focus on is control and shift for growing and shrinking the size of your brush. All right, the center of it is where it's going to show at a 1, and then as it drops off towards the outer size of the gizmo is where it's going to go down to where it's 0 and has no effect, and that's what this is. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to pull things out, uh, you know, try to smooth this without actually uh, pulling anything. I'm going to do that with each frame. So I'm going to try to smooth it out. Now watch what happens when I smooth it. See what just happened there? It just smoothed that out a bit. It's kind of smoothing everything. That's why I like to call this the smooth. Really it's a push, but it's what I like to call the smooth. And it kind of smooths out the mesh. What you're looking for is kind of a fluent looking thing. I'm going to try to pull this out by smoothing it. You always want to start with smooths. All right. And you notice right over here I have the MPCR thigh is what's selected right now. That's what I have which is usually with a skirt that's what you're gonna start out with is that. Let's see now I'm just trying my best to get this skirt out of that leg and you have to just left click on your mesh and you'll see the line. You see that little line that's getting drawn? That's just showing me where I've, uh, you know, where I've tried to smooth. And I'm making kind of gradual movements across the mesh. And see now I've pulled it off of that leg, but only in one frame of this animation. Weight painting is a very long, long, grueling process. So you'll probably be doing this for a long time. Anyways, move on to the next video.